After everything that's happened over the past few months, we Beck West felt very strongly that we wanted to create something that would one, be impactful for African American women business owners, and two, provide insight to supplier diversity and procurement professionals about the journey that African American women take as they attempt to get contracts with corporate America. I think that the walking in the shades of success conversation meet both of those goals. The walking in the shades of success conversation is just that. It's a conversation between four African American women business owners and a moderator who at one point in time was a WBE and now works for a corporation. The conversation is impactful, it's insightful, and it is extremely powerful. So I hope that you enjoy and please let us know what you think. All right, good afternoon, ladies. Um, my name is Lily Otieno. I'm currently the portfolio manager for major construction projects and programs at Southern California Gas Company. I've been um, in the diversity world for so many years that I don't care to say, but it's been a journey working alongside all the ladies today that you, you will meet. It's been a, a rewarding journey and it's also been a journey where we have moments where we learn. Today's conversation is really much picking back on the social injustice um, that the, the country has experienced. But as we look at all the changes that are happening and where the conversations is going, we realize very quickly, like we've always known, that African-American women are always thought of less. There is a perception and a reality for us where they say women, but when you look at the corporate numbers in diversity, African-Americans as a population, we're about 14.3% or maybe 13, depending on what census numbers you're looking at. But when you look at procurement uh, within the African-American, especially women, we are at the lower numbers, about 3% to 4%. So as we look at this conversation, we wanna ask ourselves, what can we do to be in the conversation? What can we do to help everyone else understand that diversity is also, there's diversity in the diversity. There's also a need for the numbers to speak for us. And there's a need for us to do more or to pivot and reframe how we look at African-American women in business so we are able to overcome and we're able to have equitable numbers as the general women business uh, population. So with that, I'd like to um, introduce the panel. I'm very excited to have this wonderful women with me with so much to say, a lot of experience. And my sisters, we've known each other. I think I've known everyone for a good over 10 years in general. So it looks like we've known each other for 60 years today. So I'm super <laughs> excited. I'm super, super excited um, to get on going. So I'll start with asking Pat Watts uh, to introduce herself. Give us a little bit about uh, your name, your background, your business and then we'll go down and, and, and follow suit before we start the conversation. Go ahead, Pat. So I am Pat Watts, and I am president and CEO of FCI Management. We are an energy solutions company that specializes in energy efficiency and renewable energy technologies. We are a program implementer for utility companies where we actually implement their energy efficiency programs for them. And we are also a electrical and general contractor. Thank you, Ms. Lilly, for this opportunity. My name is Rhonda Jackson. I am a serial entrepreneur, small business advocate, and host of a YouTube TV show called The Road to Recovery. Um, my core business is design and construction, and we are also a Benjamin Moore authorized retailer. Hi, how are you? And thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my name is Sharon Coleman, and I am uh, the president of Coleman Construction, um, which is a general engineering um, construction company, and we specialize in carpentry, carpentry and concrete work. Um, and then I'm also president of the National Association of Minority Contractors here in Southern California. Um, 
and National Association of Minority Contractors is a national organization with several chapters in numerous states throughout the United States. And we are outreach for minority firms. We help uh, build capacity of our minority contractors here in Southern California. Okay, good afternoon. I am Barbara Myrick. I'm the president of BNM Construction. We are located in the front range of Colorado Springs, Colorado. We are a general A1 general contractor. We are an electrical contractor and space plan and design furniture procurement uh, contractor. We are the one stop shop for our government clients um, and municipalities. Thank you so much, ladies, for that great introduction. And so, as you can hear, you have so much experience. You've been in the business for quite a while. Pivoting to Rhonda, the question was have you have you had a need to not be yourself so that you can you can continue not to show you're the owner of the business and did that how did that impact your business so one of the two things that came to mind when you asked that question was when i actually went to get my contractor's license and you actually need someone to kind of co-sign that you are who you say you are and it was a very interesting jury process that some of the general contractors that I'd worked for as a designer, some of the general contractors that had come in and done, pro you know, worked on projects for me to help facilitate things, the, the lack of support when I guess they maybe as males, they felt like we were stepping over them or, you know, my, that was a few years ago, so I was quite a bit younger. And they thought, oh, you know, you're too young. You don't know anything about the business. And, you know, but it's like, we just work side by side on how many projects <laughs> you have a few hundred thousand dollars proving that we did this process together. Like, where's the faith now? So um, it, it was interesting though, but I was able, I had to actually go outside of our community to get that validation, which was really interesting to me. Like I, I you know, make a point of supporting within my community, recycling every dollar I can. And when I needed that support to actually grow and go beyond that, I actually had to go outside of the community to get that support. So it was, it, when you asked that question, I, I, that made me reflect and I thought that was really interesting. Um, so that, that was one. And then the other thing that I had stopped doing, cause I was going around to corporations, I, you know, I had this package in my head of services that I could offer based on my experience with Warner Brothers. And um, I stopped going in rooms by myself. So they could make assumptions, they could, pick from a, you know, the, I called us the United Colors of Benetton when we would sit at the table. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that old white yeah. man, black man, Chinese man, I, got, I had it all covered. So no matter who was in the room, you're going to find somebody on our team that you can relate to. But having not gone in rooms by myself, you know, we kind of, they skipped over it because whoever they wanted to assume was the owner, they assumed it. They didn't maybe ask it out loud, but we could go on to the rest of the conversation. And like Sharon was saying, by the end of the conversation, you knew who the owner was, but at least we could kind of skip over any kind of, um, you know, predispositions or assumptions that anyone might've wanted to make at the table. I agree. I mean, it's, it's been a, it's, it's interesting how we overcome. So we've, we've built some set of tools to be able to overcome whenever the situation comes about. And it's the grit that we have, perseverance. We want to we wanna go for it. We want to feed our families, Sharon said. And we just push forward and get a way of getting it done. You talk about just going with a, a group of people. I love the Colors of Bennington <laughs> reference here. And, uh, and Sharon, making your, going with your superintendent and, and just kind of sticking it out there. Barbara, just keep going. No matter what the outcome is, you believe in just let, let them know, let them just see this is who I bring. I'm smart, I'm intelligent, I know construction. I'm not just a face. So I, I think it speaks a lot to us as women and women in very diverse businesses and how we overcome. Pat, uh, anything from your side that you've seen that is one thing that you would like to see change as we that discussions in this corporate environment. How do we see change? What are the three top things you tell a young Pat going into business and saying, hey, look, look out for this. What do I look out for? And what would that be or those be 
uh, ideas to look out for. What can, what can a young African-American woman studying business today, what can they put their quiver in their tool set to be able to overcome um, when they start working for corporate America? So I think the first thing that they have to do, so there's a sort of a mixture of confidence and humility that you have to have when you're in an environment because everything can come at you. I have worked in a corporate environment and I had, you know, and we're talking the 80s and the 90s when there was just a lot of underlying kind of racism and you have to earn your respect. You almost have to demand your respect, but you have to earn it and demand it based on the fact that you are confident in your knowledge of what it is that you're doing, whether it or job you're performing, um, you have to be confident in. And I think that in confidence does not equate to cockiness. It just means that you know that you, you know, understand what you're doing, what you're saying to people, your job, you're performing it at a top notch. And you, you have to take those same attributes and bring them into a business. So where the conversation we were having just a minute ago, whether you have to have somebody else come in and pretend that they're the owner of your business. That was never going to happen to me because I already had the battle scars from climbing up the corporate ladder. And I had a lot of different challenges in that way. But I managed to find a way to earn respect. And I think I did it by being confident, not allowing anybody to run over me and being knowledgeable of, of my of, of my my personal skill sets in in whatever it was, was I'm doing. Very well said, um, Sharon. What are some of the things you would advise right now? Moving to supplier diversity, how can we increase our numbers? Given you are the the president of Neymark and you have a lot of other businesses looking to you right now saying, Sharon, how can we get contracts? What do we do to bust in and get, our, get ourselves known so we can get that corporate procurement pie, so to speak? So um, construction is still um, basically based upon who you know. We all know construction is, uh, is really who you know and you have to work with a company or try and find a company that you can work with because it doesn't matter. Say for instance, for a number of years, um, I was a government contractor, but still not here in Ca California where I lived at, but in several other states. And um, when I decided to do commercial work back here at home, nobody had, had seen me work with anybody. It didn't matter how much work I did elsewhere. It was who you know here and what have you done here? So you always have to, that's why we try to make sure our larger contractors in our organization try and hire somebody smaller so that therefore they can get some experience and somebody can vouch and say, oh yeah, they worked on my project. Um, um, so, what we try and do is try to encourage teaming, mentoring, um, and other things like that in order to get a newer contractor some kind of recognition to say that they've done business and, and, and they are worthy of an opportunity. Um, we try and teach our contractors about, uh, since LA is, extremely union-based um, and continuing so. We try and teach our contractors about the PLA agreement, signing uh, either a one-time signing or either joining. Um, we try to be that outreach resource for them to be able to ask the questions to take them to the next step. And we provide training classes in order to enhance some of their skills. Um, in that way also. So our whole thing is building capacity and we try and take you small and, and build you large, so. 
Thank you for that. I think um, ability to team and to mentor and to train and to just give somebody the, the pathway for success is very important. And I think the work that you do at NAMAC is commendable just to push forward the smaller businesses and to get into this. I can only do business with someone I know or I've been somebody that I have a relationship. And so I think that's a good pathway for that. But you did bring up another point about recognition, and I want to pivot to Rhonda uh, in this question. And the, the question that I'm coming, coming up to mind is recognition is key in this business. It's important for somebody to say, hey, I, I am recognized by uh, NAMAC, I've been recognized by WeBank, I've been recognized by WebQuest, I've been recognized by this and this organization to give additional credibility. Rhonda, I know you've gotten local, state, national recognition. How do you go about advising a young African American business owner to be able to be recognized? So, what are the three things or one thing that you should do as a business owner? to be recognized so you can use that recognition as part of your capability statement, as part of your, your sales pitch and whatnot. So first, I actually wanna acknowledge the power of this call specifically, because if I look across my screen and I see Dr. Pamela Williamson of WeBank and I, approached her? How can I help? How can I be involved? You know, would you be interested? My answer is always yes. I don't know what she's signing me up for, but if it's her, <laughs> then I'm saying yes. So to plug into networks, you know, to be with you, Lily, and learn how to do a capability statement, not come to the table thinking that I know I already got it together. You just, I just need a contract. Well, that's not true. You know, there's so much that's going to knock you on your butt. And unless you have a resource or a pool of on this call, strong black women that are supporting you and cheering for you. I mean, for Barbara and I to connect over a bid package and, you know, she offered me the opportunity to do renderings for the VA hospital on the package that we were putting together for a really nice contract that was coming up. I mean, those connections, you don't get that by, you know, sitting in a corner or being a fly on a wall. You know, you plug in, you approach women. I mean, I asked Pat, could I carry her purse? I didn't even know what she did at the time, but I just knew that she looked important in the room. She was on stage, she came down, you know. <laughs> I was gonna help, I was, I show, you show up to be of service. And when I saw the message on the bottom of Sharon Coleman's email as president of the National Association of Minority Contractors, and it said, show up, step up, right? So it wasn't just come to get, right? It was about, you know, how I can make deposits back, how I can, you know, contribute and others can benefit from. Be that me as an example, be that me and participating. And, you know, I've presented some of the classes that Sharon was talking about to share information with other contractors on, you know, how to build, how to market themselves and, and what to do. So I think it's that collaboration. It's nothing that I could even take credit for that I solely had done, but it's, you know, women that are in position that knew what was happening in those different organizations or those different arenas and that they were willing to, you know, help, but they also saw someone that showed up and was willing to do the work. I like that. Show up, step up. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wanted to take this moment as well to recognize the organizations that support us as women owners and, and definitely Dr. Pamela Williamson with Rebecca West, just being that anchor for African American women and all women in general, but in particularly taking the leap of faith and having a discussion in this way to pave the way for other women. And it's never an easy to be among the first and Pamela, you are having a big journey here and we are following through because we trust you. We know your capability. We know you've shown up and you've stepped up. We've seen how you work. And so I think the underlying piece here is your credibility that Pat talked about. You know, you have to have a level of confidence. You, you have to show up, participate, network, be in the discussion. Uh, always being part of the discussion so that, hey, somebody will call you, somebody will pick up the phone and say, I do know her and I can vouch for her. 
I can vouch that she's a good person. So a recommendation, so to speak. So we're coming up with a lot of recommendations or tools that we can use to provide to corporate America to help other women to increase the procurement of, of us for African American women today in corporate America. And I just, I cannot underscore it enough. Um, Barbara, I wanna pivot to you. And one of the questions I'm coming to my mind is still the misconceptions of black women or African-American women don't collaborate, don't work together. But I hear just right now on this call, you've been collaborating, Pat, the same way, Sharon, Rhonda, all of you have been collaborating and all of you have been successful in your own businesses. What are some of the things, uh, Barbara, that you would like to clear in terms of the misconceptions that black women don't work together, we don't wanna participate or partner, team, mentor, some of the things you've seen and what we do to have framed the messaging out there that we actually indeed work together and support each other? I think um, we have to talk about it more. We have to talk about our collaborations more and the partners that we have. And I, I think um, even just sharing, you know, Rhonda talked about a job at the VA that we didn't get. And we worked hard to get it. I mean, we worked hard to pursue it, but we didn't get it. But that's not going to stop us. And I, I think we, we don't talk about the partnerships that African Americans do. We don't talk about the joint ventures and mentor proteges and the coachings that African American companies do. We don't advertise it on our website. We don't talk about it from a volunteer perspective of what we do in the community. Those are the things that we don't talk about. I think those are the golden gems, um, the boards that we sit on, the committees that we advise on. We, we don't put that, those things on our resume. We don't put them on our website. We, we don't talk about it. And the reason I can talk about it now is because now I, I, I do so much in the community. And someone said, your name carries clout. I said, no, it doesn't. And he said, Yes, I, I, I just want to do your website. I said, why would you want to do my website? He said, because it attaches me to you. And whether you believe it or not, you are forced to be reckoned with in the community. And I don't see myself as that. We don't see ourselves like that. We don't. And we need to start seeing ourselves like that. We need to start talking about our impact in our communities and how, what we volunteer and our nonprofits that we have. We need to talk about those things, and I am just learning this year to talk about those things. And I've been asked to, to be on platforms and speak, and, and, it, and it, it exposes us more. And, and I think we're those hidden gems where we don't talk about our successes like our counterparts do. And I think we really need to start talking about ourselves. It's okay for us to brag about ourselves. It's okay to say that we, Dr. Pamela Williams. I was so proud, honestly, when I found out she was African American. I said, oh my gosh, she's African American and she's running way back west. And, and you know, I started to hear like you, Rhonda, I went up to my liaison here and said, how can I help? And it wound up getting me to Pamela. That had to have a conversation, you know? And so, um, I just love it when I can go to an event and see us. And I can hear us talk about our successes. We don't talk about ourselves. And I just think we have to talk about ourselves. I think we need to be on more boards. We need to sit at state level committees. I just think we just sell ourselves short. And you know what? We, we just need to stop doing that. We just have to brag about ourselves and talk about ourselves and love who we are and love the skin that we're in. We do. We just have to do that. And that's how we're going to inspire young Black women to do, to do and be the things that they want to be. That's how we're going to inspire when they can see somebody that looks like them sitting at the table somebody that looks like them sitting up on a panel giving them advice, 
not the Oprah's of the world. It's the common lay people like us that is going to inspire them to dream big and pursue. Wow. Well said. Excellent. Excellent. I think you've hit on several points that a lot of us are taught not to brag about ourselves because they're going to, they're going to look at you like you're bragging yet our male counterparts, when they do that, they call them confident. But when we do that, we are called other names, quirky, whatever you want to call us. So it is important for us to change the narrative and start reframing. I, I'll give you a quick story. Daughter, she, she, when she was young, she's very outgoing. And that's mostly all African-Americans are outgoing. And we are very strong. And I, I tell people that, you know, you learn how to speak in a podium for Easter Sunday when you're really like three to four years old. You're put in front of people and you have to re recite this Bible verse. It's what we've been taught and we do it all the time. So speaking in front of people is never a challenge. So one time I was at a teacher conference and the teacher goes, you know, your daughter is very bossy. And I was like, what do you mean? What does she do? And, and she started explaining that whenever the kids are playing, she wants to arrange them. She wants to make sure that they're doing this. She's, she's, she's doing all these activities. And then I told her, isn't that a leader? Isn't she just being a leader? And she it took her back for a second. And then she realized what she had just done is that you're calling her bossy, yet she's just being a leader. She's helping. She's helping you, in other words. She's helping arrange the students. She's helping with doing something. She's leading, and all the children do follow her. So it's in messaging, in how we frame ourselves, in how we look at ourselves is important and look at ourselves as the leaders that we are and embrace that role in whatever shape and form that we have. I, I feel like you brought in the hidden figures today in your conversation. Yes, we've been hidden for a long time. Yes, we've been in positions where we didn't want to be or show that we are the leaders who we are but it's time for us to embrace the next movement and take this little sliver of change that we are seeing and insert ourselves so that our children and our daughters coming behind us will have an opportunity where they're not, never gonna be called bossy, they'll be called confident, they'll be called leaders, they're never gonna be called, you're too aggressive, yet the, our male counterparts do the same thing and they call them, uh, what do they, they, they say that they are uh, inspiring, they are doing certain things that we don't do. So bringing us out there, outside of the hidden figures world is a key for us women, African-American women, to be able to take that next step. A journey begins with one step. And I always have uh, recited this poem, every journey begins with one step, every fire, begins with one spot. Every successful business began with an idea, began with one pushing their passion forward. So as we look at ourselves and we are pushing ourselves forward, this is our chance to be that one spark, to have that one idea that will push another African-American woman to make a change, to have that opportunity to speak to a contracting agent, uh, a procurement officer, anybody else with a contract, maybe it's a teaming opportunity, and bring one up, support each other, call on each other and say, hey, I have this opportunity, or introduce somebody. So we're looking into a lot of things that we can do on our own, but we're also looking into corporate America and see where they can give us an opportunity without any prejudice and judgment about the color of our skin or being African American and any other misconceptions that they have. And so as I wrap up today's session, I'd like to say thank you so much, Dr. Pamela Williamson, for giving us this platform to just talk. Barbara said very well, we just need to talk. We just need to at the discussions and the more discussions we have 
our voices, our collective voices will be heard not only by our fellow African-American women's business owners, but corporate America and everybody else that works in the procurement space, because we all need each other to be successful and to build our community. Thank you for tuning in to both segments of the Walking in the Shades of Success conversation. When we started this journey, we all felt that we would only be doing two segments, but after completing this journey, we feel that there's so much more that we wanna share. So we will be doing a few more segments. Um, we don't know when those will be released, but we will definitely keep you informed. And thank you again for spending time with us and please feel free to share your feedback. Thank you.